Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And welcome as we come together to celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. In today's Gospel, Jesus tells us that the Spirit will be sent to be our guide. For the times perhaps we have not trusted in God's Spirit to guide us. Let's turn to the Lord now and ask for the courage and the confidence to trust in the Lord's promise. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brethren. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to choose men from among them and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They sent Judas, called Barsabbas, and Silas, leading men among the brethren, with the following letter. The brethren, both the apostles and the elders, to the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, greeting. Since we have heard that some persons from us have troubled you with words, unsettling your minds, although we gave them no instructions, it has seemed good to us in an assembly to choose men and send them to you, with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who themselves would tell you the same things by word of mouth, for it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from that which has been sacrificed to idols, 
and from blood, and from what is strangled, and from unchastity. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O God, be gracious and bless us, and let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon earth, and all nations learn your salvation. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and shout for joy. With uprightness you rule the peoples. You guide the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give his blessing that all the ends of the earth may revere him. Let Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let Let all the the peoples peoples praise you. A reading from the book of Revelation. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine upon it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the lamp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. If a man loves me, he will keep my word, says the Lord. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If someone loves me, they will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. The one who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I go away and I will come to you. If you have loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, 
so that when it does take place, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever asked yourself the question, what must I do? You know, when we face tricky situations in life, we wonder what the way forward might be. When things have happened, when there's conflicts in relationships or things have been upset, or maybe even we are at the crossroads of our lives, we ask ourselves the question, what must I do? And if you're anything like me, many times I kind of think I have to figure things out by myself. I have to fix these things by myself. So easily, we forget that the Spirit of God is always with us. And if we listen to God's Spirit, the Spirit will teach us, Jesus says, because she is always amongst us and within us. We're presented in that first reading with a wonderful account of how the Spirit is at work in the early church. A dispute has arisen about whether people must be Jewish and thus follow the Jewish tradition of circumcision to be Christian. And this would mean that the Gentiles, those who were not Jewish, would be excluded or that they would have to meet the demands of traditional Jewish law in order to be followers of Christ. Paul had already admitted some Gentiles to the church from Antioch and from Derbe and Lystra. So the apostles come together in what is called the very first council of the church, the Council of Jerusalem, to look at this matter, to decide what they must do. Because it's precisely in that moment that the church, the early church, is at a crossroads. And Peter, in unfortunately a selection that those who put that first reading together today have done, who's been left out, speaks of how the Spirit will guide them. And at the end we hear, it was decided, a wonderful line in the Scriptures, it was decided by the Holy Spirit and ourselves that. A true partnership there between those gathered in Jerusalem and the Spirit of God. There's a real sense in the early church that the Spirit is at work, leading them and guiding them and helping them always to discern the way forward. She is present in them and to them, and they are very aware of her presence. I wonder today if we have the same conviction or if we think that we are too sophisticated to, to rely on God's Spirit. You know, in our own lives, we have to make decisions about family, work, and relationships, about even maybe our state in life. How do we do this? Do we really rely on God's Spirit? Can we really say it was decided with the Holy Spirit and ourselves that we would do X or Y or Z? I want to suggest to you today that the Holy Spirit helps us face things in a number of different ways. First of all, the Spirit helps us to often face the difficult questions of life, the ones that we know deep down we need to face with honesty and maybe even a brutal honesty. For the early church, the hard question, the one they had to face with brutal honesty was, do you have to be Jewish to be Christian or not? Notice something else, the second thing there. Once we have named the issue, like they do in the Acts of the Apostles, see what happens next. 
They are open to listening to different opinions. There is much debate. There's listening and there's speaking. And if you read that text, there's a real sense that everyone is involved. Everyone is being listened to. Everyone has a contribution to make. Everyone is able to say what they think is important. And they are all given a hearing. When the Spirit of God is, a work, is at work amongst us, there is an openness to listening, a real listening, and a freedom to say what we want to say. And then the third thing is, when they come to a conclusion, everyone has been part of the process. Nobody or their opinion has been omitted. The Spirit brings about something new in everybody that is gathered in Jerusalem. There's a sense of renewal and unity after an issue which has sorely, div sorely divided that early church community. And so the church can now move forward from Jerusalem and continue to fulfill her task, the proclamation of the good news of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And you need to forgive me, but St. Ignatius, the founder of the Society of Jesus, us Jesuits, is considered the master of discernment. And he says that the Spirit of God is at work in different ways, helping us not only to know what to do, but also to come to know what God's will is for us and the best way that we can respond to that will. There's a number of things Ignatius says that help us come to good decisions. And often we use a combination of them anyway, maybe even subconsciously at times when we are pondering the question, what should I do next? I want to just draw on three quick things that Ignatius says. The first one is that there's a rational component to the decisions that we make. Any religion that does not use a rational component for decisions is not of the Spirit of God. We have to use our rationality because rationality is also a gift that is given to us from God. That we work something out in a reasoned manner. That we use our intellect and we consider rationally the different possibilities. The second thing Ignatius says is that we use our imagination. We use the power of our imaginations. We imagine if I did this, what it might look like, or if I did that, what it might look like. This way or that way. What is going on if I imagine? Because often our imaginations too help us to make a decision. And then Ignatius says, we look at the consolations and the desolations in our hearts, the movements within us. We pay attention to our hearts and to our feelings, what leaves us feeling energized and enthusiastic, and that which leaves us feeling deflated or simply disinterested. Because Ignatius says, God is speaking to us in that place too. The Spirit is at work in us too. And so any religion, once again, that denies or seems to negate the way that we feel or give attention to our hearts is not being led by the Spirit of God. And so Ignatius believes that God prompts us, gives us direction through these inner movements, our desires. And Ignatius says that our desires lead us to do two things, either to a place of consolation or to a place of desolation. Now stay with me. I know that I might be uh, talking all over the place, but I think this is important because it teaches us something how the Spirit is at work. Ignatius calls consolation every increase of faith, hope, and love, and all interior joy that invites and attracts us to what is heavenly and to the salvation 
of one's soul by filling it with peace and quiet in its creator and Lord. In other words, anything that leaves us feeling energetic, inspired, wanting to embrace life and do the best that we can. Desolation, on the other hand, he says, is an interior disturbance which is caused by an evil spirit, darkness of soul, turmoil of spirit, urgings to what is low and earthly, restlessness rising from many disturbances and temptations which lead us to a loss of faith, hope, and love. He says, the soul is wholly slothful, tepid, sad, and separated, as it were, from its Creator and Lord. And so Ignatius teaches us to pay attention to these movements within us, because the Spirit of God is at work bringing about something new in us and through us in these very movements. The Spirit of God is helping us to face the difficult life decisions we inevitably have to face, aiding us to be open and to listen to varying opinions and voices, and sometimes even varying opinions and voices within our own minds and those outside of ourselves. And finally, prompting us to move in a direction which brings us consolation, renewal, and energy that brings us to live from the best part of ourselves. And we know it when it happens. There's a feeling within us that we just know this is right. So I wonder if on this sixth Sunday of Easter, we are being invited to ponder the question, do we, like the early church, really allow the decisions we make to be guided by God's Spirit? Often, we think it's up to us. We forget that the Spirit is with us and wanting to lead us and guide us to be the best that we can. Do you allow the Spirit of God to bring the best out of your heart and of your life? Or maybe can you, looking back over some of the big decisions you've had to make in your life, see how God's Spirit has been at work, leading and guiding you at key moments and important junctions in your life? Or perhaps you notice that going forward, you need to invite the Spirit you may have forgotten to lead you and guide you, because she is always there for us. Let's profess together now our faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Knowing that God's Spirit is at work in us and through us, let us now bring our prayers, our needs, before the Lord. For a renewed trust in God's Spirit that would intentionally become aware of and trust in the Spirit of God, promised by Jesus to help us navigate the challenges of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who feel anxious and fearful, 
that they would know the pace that comes from trusting in God's spirit of love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who are at enmity with others, that they would seek the path or reconciliation and peace for the benefit of all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For God's creation, that we would be guided by the Spirit to live lives that protect and steward the gift of creation that God has given us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who live on the margins of society and the church, the poor, the sick, abused, and children, the LGBTI community, refugees, displaced people, those who are divorced, and women who have suffered the trauma of abortion, that they would find their right, rightful place in our society and church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our loved ones who have died, that they may rest in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our prayers known to you through your Spirit living within us and amongst us, in Christ Jesus, your Son and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our human nature. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Thank you, ask you to receive us and please the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away our iniquities. Cleanse us of all our sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and gave you thanks and praise and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Butti our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our, per when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together now in the very words that the Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of thy most power and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer one another, those we are with, the sign of peace. If you're alone, simply just pray for peace at this time. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and the sins of the Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and the sins Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, peace to God.